Hello everyone, it's Pastor Tony Collins from the House of Worship in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, and thank you so much for allowing me and this ministry to be part of your home. I have a great word for you tonight, another anointed word for you tonight, and it's about leadership. It's about leadership in times of war. We're in a fight, we're in a battle, we're, we're, we're scuffling, if you will, with the powers of this world. And there's a fight between light and darkness, between good and evil, between the, 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 the tentacles of righteousness and the tentacles of the world, if you will. And God's desire for you is that you would walk in victory. But you got to know how to do that, and I'm going to teach you how to do that today. So let's go in and check out the sermon, and I'll be back in a few minutes. The Lord tonight, we come to lift him up higher than he already is. Come on, clap your hands, people of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, God is calling you to be a strong spiritual force in your home and in the lives of those that you come in contact with simply by demonstrating the word of God. Number one, I got to demonstrate the word. Secondarily, I have to direct the way. This way, come on everybody, this way, no, 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 not that way, but this way. That's what Moses did. He directed the people and showed them the way. Not just demonstrating the word, not just saying the word, not just you having the mindset of Christ, not just your behavior honoring God, but saying to those that you are in charge of, not that way, but this way. Mm. That's what I'm trying to do. That's what a good leader does. A good leader does not give you a great enough compliment that he's saying, I'm just going to let you go to hell. I'm going to let your blessings just, just burn and wither before you. I'm going to step into your life, hands shaking, mouth trembling, and tell you, not that way, but this way. I know you're going to want to shoot me. I know you're going to want to talk about me. I know you're going to try to trample me under because I've told you you're going the wrong way, but it's my job to to direct the way. Yes. He's saying, Moses said, follow me. Follow me as I follow Christ. You, you know the word. Know the word and follow me. Evaluate my walking. Evaluate my words. Evaluate my behavior. Evaluate my mindset. Evaluate what I'm doing based on the word. And as I'm following God, then you follow me this way. Watch me. Observe me. Hear me. Model me. This way. That's why. As a leader, it's important for us to have some level of transparency. Huh? See, I, you know, you know, you know, her, you heard me say it. The birds don't always sing. The bees don't always buzz. The flowers don't always bloom. The sun is not always shining. Huh? Come on, somebody. In, in the life of a leader, there will, because it rain on the just and the unjust. Everybody has hardship. Everybody got trouble. Everybody got difficulty in the name of Jesus Christ. And that's part of the process of being a leader. And leading is for you to see me going through difficulty, but I'm saying go through difficulty this way. Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, yes, somebody hurt me, but I got to say how I deal with that is we go this way. Hmm. Somebody offended me. I'm still human now. You know, I, I can be offended now, but how I handle, with, how I handle offense is we go in this way. Uh, we go in this, we, we, we go in this way. Ask Sister Gail. I get crazy sometimes. But she say, let me tell you how to handle a crazy spouse. We go in this way. Huh? My, my kids acted the fool for a minute in the name of Jesus Christ. I know some of y'all know that. And y'all had to say, look at me. I can handle it going this way. 
I don't know if you know it or not, but I got fired off of my job in the name of Jesus Christ, making big money for no reason. I got to handle it now in the name of Jesus Christ. Hey, I'm going this way. Everybody know Minister Tate going through in the name of Jesus Christ. Hey, your mom died. But he said, let me show you how to handle it when your mom died. You go through it this way. Be some rain in your life, believer. If you're going to be a leader, you got to direct the way. Huh? Exodus 18 and 20 says, show them the way that they must walk. And the work that they must do, you got a way to walk if you're a believer. You got a way to walk in that honors God. You got a way to walk in that gives him glory. There's a way to go. There's a way to go. Can't go your own way. There is the way to go in the name of Jesus Christ. Psalms 37, 23 says, the steps of a good man. No, not, uh, uh, no, 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 don't step there. No, 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 don't step there. Uh, step there. Huh? Next step, step there. Don't you understand that the culture that you're in, that you are walking literally through a spiritual minefield? Don't you understand that? Every time you turn on the television, oh, Jesus. Every time you turn on the television, where, depending on where you park, uh, the fiery darts of the enemy are ahead of your way. Don't you, don't you understand that? Don't you understand that you're not operating based on wisdom. You're not operating based on a thought process that says, in all things, I must honor God. There's no small, there's no insignificant. Hey, I can't sit here in front of the TV and watch this craziness because it's going to get inside my spirit and I can't see how it's going to affect it now. But you can't see everything that's going on in the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, help me, Jesus. John 14 and 6 says, Jesus answered, I am the way. There it is. I'm the way. Huh? That's the way I'm directing you to. Let's go this way. That's where Jesus, that's his way. He's already laid out the path. He's already laid out the plan. He's already laid it out. He says, that's, that, that, that's why he's ordering my steps. That's why he's ordering your steps because he's already laid out the plan. You can't, see, you can't see where the minds are. You can't see the tricks and the schemes and the plans of the enemy, but he can see it. The devil's got a strategy for you. Do you have a strategy for him? I got one. Follow the word. John, he says, he said, Jesus, I, I'm the way, I'm the truth. I'm the light. No one comes to the Father except through me. No one comes to the Father except those that are following my way. No one comes to the Father except those that are walking in wisdom. Mm. Fool don't come to salvation. Oh, oh, oh. A fool can't be delivered. Jesus. Because uh, they won't submit themselves to the word and the will of God. They, they think they can lay their hands on divine things on their own terms. Oh, Jesus. Uh, you, don't, you, don't, you don't get why it's important for you to bring your kids to church in the name of Jesus. Not at 11 o'clock. Oh, but at 10 o'clock. Oh, make it 9 o'clock in the name of Jesus Christ. You don't, you don't understand why you need to sit down with your family and read devotions and pray with your family in the name of Jesus Christ. You, 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 you think more highly of yourself than you than you ought to. You, you think you got this under control, but you don't even understand that the devil got you in a box even now in the name of Jesus Christ. Hmm. Principles of leadership, you want to be blessed, walk in the abundancy that God has for you, you got to demonstrate the word, you have to direct the way, and then you have to develop a team. I heard of Pastor, uh, Pastor Ty Van Thomas over the weekend. He said, you need a team to fulfill a dream. That's good, man. That's good right there. You need, you need a team, Dad. You need a team, Mom, to fulfill a dream. If you, if you have the vision in your home of raising godly children and having a home that's full of peace and, and harmony, you're going to need everybody in the house working together. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Help me, Jesus. Huh? You're going to need a team to fulfill the dream. The reality is that a man cannot live by himself. That's why he made Adam and Eve. He said, it's not good for man to be alone. The truth is, we are better when we're together. 
I can do some stuff on my own for the kingdom of God. I can. In the name of Jesus Christ, you can do some stuff on your own, Mr. Washington, in the name of Jesus, for the kingdom of God. But when we get together and we agree together, oh, it, the, it, it explodes exponentially. We can do even more. Oh, I came to tell somebody in the name of Jesus Christ, the house of worship needs all team members. Hey, thank you, Jesus. All team members operating in their role for the kingdom of God if we're going to walk in excellence. To walk in the fullness that God has for us. There's a story about um, Lee Iacocca. He wrote a book, uh, I believe it was after he had brought uh, Chrysler back uh, from literally the dead. And he had talked with Vince Lombardi, the, the famous uh, head coach of the Green Bay Packers football team. And he asked Vince, he said, man, tell me, he says, what's the secret to making a winning team? This is what, this is what Lombardi's quote is. Lombardi says, here it is. You got to love each other. So each player has to be thinking about the next guy and be saying to himself, if I don't block my man, my, my player, he's going to get hurt. I have to do my job well so that he can do, whew, Jesus, his job well. The difference between mediocrity and greatness is the feeling that these guys have for each other. Holy Spirit sent me by here today to tell you in the name of Jesus Christ, House of Worship Church family, the difference between a mediocre church and a great church is the feeling that you have for each other. That's why fellowship, remember the fellowship is one of the pillars. That's why fellowship is so important. If you're going to be a good leader, you're going to have to develop your team. Now, what's the criteria? Uh, Jethro gives it to Moses here. He said, you're going to have to develop a team, Moses. You can't do this all by yourself. He said, you're going to have to develop a team. And here's the criteria. First of all, he said, they got to know Jesus. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, I, I, let, me, let, me talk, let me talk parenthetically for a moment as, as a father of, of two beautiful daughters. Uh, that, that, that's a decree in the house. You got to know Jesus. Uh, oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, if, 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 if I come and have kids and had all the money in the world, all the prestige in the world, all the position in the world, and one of my girls died and went to hell, I would have been a horrible father. The first criteria on my team is you got to know Jesus. You got to know Jesus, young folk. I'm sorry. You go, you come into church. We're going to read the Bible. You're going to be here on Wednesday night. You're going to be here at 9 o'clock in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? Because, Jasmine, you got to know Jesus. You got to know Jesus. I won't allow you not to know Jesus. I decree that you know Jesus. I'll do everything I need to do so you will know Jesus. But we are not here at the house of worship, but we got people, Christian folk, leaving their kids at home on Sunday. Uh, leaving their kids at the house. Uh, not bringing their kids to church on time. Uh, not really having a spiritual conversation with them. Not spending any time in the word with them. And then you want to try to figure out why, why he got a child out of wedlock. Oh, I'm going to preach in here. I can't get no amens. I'm going I'm, I'm to preach in here. Trying to figure out why she, why she pregnant. Pastor, I don't believe, I can't believe, I can't believe it, Pastor. She pregnant. I can believe it. I can believe it. Because at 9 o'clock, where was you at? At 9 o'clock, Wednesday night, where were you at in the name of Jesus Christ? Where, 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 where were you at, at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning? Are there any spiritual consistency in you? When your child looked at you, they didn't see any real adoration for the things of God. But now you want to uh, act like you're shocked and amazed. Huh? I need some folk to know Jesus. Uh, if you know Jesus, then you will have a fear of God. You're going to want to do what God wants you to do. And when you want to do what God wants you to do, you'll start praying. You start praying for your situation. You start praying for your mom and your dad. You start praying for your children. You start praying over your circumstances. You won't, you, 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 you'll be slow to say what I think I ought to do. And you'll, you'll seek God's will in prayer. Huh? And you'll have a vision about what God wants you to be and what you, he wants your family to be. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. And you will find uh, uh, when you get ready to develop this team, he said, I want folk, folk who know the Lord. I want folk who don't fear God, who, who fear God. I want people who are going to pray. I want people who got a vision. They, can fall, they need to fall under my vision but have a vision of their own. I need people who are not afraid of opposition. Yes. Let me tell you something. Whenever you decide you're going to do the right thing, pass the key. Whenever you decide that you're going to do the right thing, immediately opposition arises. I've done, it. I've, I've, I've done this here before. I've done this. Think, think, about, think, about, think, about your house. think about your house. Think about your house. Are you doing everything you need to do at your house in the name of Jesus Christ? Oh, that's a pretty good answer is no. I hope it's not. I hope the hope answer is yes. The hope answer is yes. I'm not doing everything I need to do at my house. Huh? Come on, man. I said last night, I can be a better husband. I can. I can, man. Hey, look, I'm a good husband, okay? There are a whole bunch of women that wish they had a husband like me. I'm not saying I'm a bad husband. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying I can be a better husband. That's what I'm saying. So at my house, everything ain't what it ought to be, okay? I'm still, God's still working on me on some stuff in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. So at my house, stuff can be better than it is. So I'm assuming at your house, the answer is, is everything the way it ought to be? The answer is no. So just stop for a minute right now. Just think about something that you could improve on to the glory of God. And just think to yourself, say, you know what? I'm going I'm to make that change. As soon as you said that sincerely, I promise you, there was a thought that came up and said, you ain't doing that. <laughs> or, or, or it said, but when you do that, everybody not going to like that. Huh? So God said, if, you, if you're going to be a leader, you cannot be afraid of opposition. Yeah. Can't do it. You can't, you can't, you can't be jo Joshua. Joshua. Joshua said, uh, for me and my house, bless you. God said, Joshua said, and for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. He said, that, that's, not, that's not up for negotiation, honey bunch, whether or not we're going to serve the Lord. I love you, baby, but that's not up for negotiation. Huh? I, I, I don't know if I can, I, can, I, can, I can give it to you like I gave it to the, to the, to the men last night. But, but men, when you stand up in your house to say the word of God is the standard starting now, mm, not everybody in the house might like it. Kids might walk around with their mouth poked out for a while. So if your deal is you're more interested in being a friend of your children than you are being a parent, then you got a problem. That'll stop, that'll stop you from doing what it is God wants you to do in the name of you. He said, so you, you're, you're afraid of opposition. Mm? Huh? When, you, when you get home and say, uh, baby, we're going to use the word of God as, as our standard, and, and, and the word of God says that uh, one, two, three, and we, you can't do that anymore, honey bunch might cop an attitude. She might sleep in the other bedroom for a month or so. Huh? Might, might, might stop cooking on a regular basis. Huh? Might find that you, your laundry has not been done anymore in the name. Oh, I came to tell somebody, oh, I can't get no help in here now in the name of Jesus Christ. You, you cannot be afraid of opposition. You cannot be afraid because somebody frowned at you when you said, we're going to do what God said we're going to do. You can't be upset because somebody decided to slight you because you're going to do what it is that God wants you to do. That's what God said to, to, to Moses. I need some men who are not afraid of opposition. Hmm. You're not, you're not dissuaded because five or six of them went over in the corner and started talking about you. Hmm. I'm going to tell you something, Doc. If I was afraid of that, I would have quit passing a long time ago. <laughs> Y'all have somebody else pass this, Sister Rachel. It wouldn't be me if, if that was the deal. Because every time somebody got together, got 10 folk got together, Bruce, and, and went over into a corner and started talking about Pastor Collins and yeah, 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 If that was going to be the deal, Doc, I would have quit a long time ago in the name of Jesus. Huh? So we're looking for folk. Looking for folk that, that's not going to take a bribe. Looking for folk that got good spiritual common sense. And just because you know the word does not mean you got good spiritual common sense. Uh, look for somebody that will not tolerate evil and will not deal with confusion and the lack of harmony. And good fellowship with both God and people. Ephesians 1 and 14 says this way. 
we henceforth are no more children. Are you still a child? Not physically, but spiritually. Henceforth, we are no more children tossed to and fro. First going this way, then going that way, then going this way, then going that way. Tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men. You know, this morning when I came in, Deacon Harrison didn't say hello to me like he normally does. I wonder if everything all right. Deacon, Deacon, over, Deacon, Deacon over in the corner with, with Washington and, and Tate. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Deacon, thank you, Deacon Burgess, for not being part of the mix. I appreciate it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> they over in the corner. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pastor this, pastor that, pastor that. You know, man. So now, now, now they, they, they can't, they can't say hey to Pastor no more. You know, we get together and we pray uh, before we come in to, 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 to serve the Lord in here. It, 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 it can't, he can't make it there now. He, he ain't showing up no more for the, for the prayer services no more. Huh? Help me, Holy Ghost. Huh? Uh huh. We have got a little prayer conference. We get on the phone every week. We had that going on. We're gonna be on the phone and pray together. All of a sudden, he, he ain't there anymore. Cause things didn't go his way in a spiritual leadership meeting. Huh? And so now I'm gonna I'm gonna back down off the Word of God because I've been slighted by men. And God said, "You can't be on my team." Huh? I need somebody going to stand for God. I, I got I I to demonstrate the word. I got to direct the way. I got to develop a team. Last thing, finally, quickly, I have to delegate the work. So, young folk, you're a part of a team. Young people. Okay, how old you are? If you're in a family, you're part of a team. You got a job to do. And mom and dad are delegating the work to you. You got to take the trash out. You got to keep your room clean. You got to do some dishes. Huh? You got homework to do. You got good grades to make. You speak back to mom and dad with respect. You respect those that are in authority over you. You respect those that are your elders. There are rules of the house, and that's part of your job. You, you, they, we are delegating the work. See, even here, we delegate the work. See, I can't do everything. I can't be everywhere at the same time. You know I'm a bivocational pastor. You know, even, even if I wasn't, even, even if, I, if, I, if I was here 24-7, I still couldn't do everything that needs to be done. Hmm? And if I did do everything that needed to be done, it would hurt me, it would hurt my, it would hurt my family, and really it would hurt you because it, would, it wouldn't allow you the privilege of allowing these men of God to, to use their giftedness to bless you. See, we're better together. We're better together than we are individually. So it's a delegate the work, man. Don't try to do it, don't try to do it all yourself. I understand, I understand that there's times, oh God, thank you for working on me, Jesus. There are times when you just want to do it yourself, right? Because you're going to do it better, you're going to do it faster. But if you delegate it and teach somebody else how to do it, it'll, it'll release that from off of your plate so you can go do something mm, that's more valuable. Listen, listen, God, in his word, he said, hey, look, man, I got, I got, I got, I got apostles. I got, I, got, I got disciples that are waiting tables. That, can, can they wait the tables? Yeah. Can they, can they maybe even do it better than the other people? Probably. All right. But they got something more important to do than waiting tables. Mm -hmm. I, and and I'm, when you're waiting the table, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, what I want you to be doing, and you're robbing someone else of their service to God in the name of Jesus Christ. And if you're part of the team, you got to serve, Doc. If you're part of the team, you have to serve. You, can't, you, can't, you, just, can't, you, can't, you just can't come to the house and uh, eat the food and go down to the store and get the, get the Nike Air Jordans and get all the clothes and, and, uh, and watch the television and, and get, take the shower and then don't do nothing. Don't do nothing. Don't do nothing. Don't do, don't do nothing. Can't do that. You can't do that. That's, that's, that's not biblical in the name of Jesus Christ. So the same thing at the house, young folk. Same thing at the house, mom, dad, whoever. Everybody got to pitch in this teamwork. Somebody said, well, I'm tired when I come home. Baby, who ain't? <laughs> Show me somebody that's not tired. I show you somebody not working every day in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, you're tired, but we, we're a team. We're working together. And children, that's your, that's your job to step in and to help mom and, and to help dad. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have to share the load. First Corinthians 3 and 8 says, he that plants and he that waters, they're one. We're a family. 
I have the role of going to work every day and, 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 and making resource, providing God, providing me with resources. And we bring those resources home and we're dealing with those resources biblically. And, and, and part of it blesses the, the church, blesses the kingdom of God. Part of it blesses my, my wife. Part of it blesses the, the children. You know, part, of, part of it blesses you know, wh whoever. But that, that's my role. Then, 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 then she's got her role that, that, that she does. And the kids, they got their role. They do. Everybody has to work together. But we all want, we're all family. House of Worship, church family, you all, if you're on this team, God's got a work for you to do in the name of Jesus Christ. And so, so Teresa comes and she leads, she leads the ushers and, 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 and Brother Ed comes and he deals with the sound room and helps with finances. And Brother John Burgess comes and, and, and does the, the, the trustee part of it. And, and, and Mr. Tay comes and he does the, 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 the missions. I can't do all of that in the name of Jesus Christ. And so we work together, but we're one. I'm not more important than Sister Teresa. I'm not more important than Brother John. That's just a role that I've got. We're all one. Ecclesiastes 4, 10 and 4, 12 says, For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth. For he hath not another to help him up. A threefold cord. That's not easily broken. I hope you found that word to be a good word, a, a blessing to you and to your family, and something that can, can help and encourage you along the, your road and your walk with Jesus Christ. If you are not in right relationship with Christ, if you don't have, if you have never acknowledged Jesus Christ to be your Lord and your Savior, and you've never surrendered your heart to him, I want to give you that opportunity right now. It is the best decision that you can ever make, that you will ever make, and it will change your life on, right now, today, in a such a positive way and also it will change your destiny and it will change your eternity and all you have to do is ask Christ to pray a short prayer and ask Christ to come into your heart to come into your life that you believe that he's the son of God that he died on the cross for you that he's coming back for you believe in my mouth believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord the word of God says that everybody that calls on the Lord that they will be saved so if you've made that decision today or you make the decision in the in the in the future let us know we want to encourage you in that and want to send you some information that'll help you in that journey. I want to pray for you before we leave tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we ask you, sir, just to step into the lives, to intervene into the lives of those that are listening tonight. As a result of their time spent here, Father, I pray, Father, you would touch what needs to be touched. You will heal what needs to be healed. You bring into salvation those which need to be brought into salvation. Father, you mend back that which has been broken, Father, that you restore, Father, as only you can restore. I pray, Father, that you would release faith in your word and faith in the person of Jesus Christ and to the lives of those that are watching as it has never been before. I pray, Father, as they choose to walk according to your word and apply divine principles and divine strategies according to your scriptures into their lives, Lord God, I pray that you would release into their lives the lack of lack and the abundance of abundance. For your glory, Jesus, and for your glory alone, I pray. Amen. So thank you once again for being uh, part of us tonight and allowing us to be part of you. Uh, we ask you to, to continue to walk by faith. Walk by faith in Jesus Christ and in the word of God and not by sight. God is up to something good in your life. Remember, Christ is on your side. See you next week. Same time, same place. Be blessed.